So, Matia, I think the meeting room is here. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't put that one in. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Let's get started. So let's. Uh, I'll take the first one. All right. So, the first one is from Instagram. Okay, and the question is, what does a typical job interview at ESA look like? Okay, we tend to have a panel of about four people, consisting of the hiring managers and human resources, and the interview lasts about approximately an hour. Um, and we're very, we always make sure that we leave an opportunity for the candidates to ask any questions that they have, of course. Now, when we were in the office, um, we had face-to-face -face interviews, of course. Um, we tend to invite the candidates uh, on the same day uh, because they're traveling um, from up from across Europe. Yeah. So, uh, shall I give it a go? You give it a go. This one's from Instagram. How many career paths can one start at ESA? Hmm. Well, this a little bit depends at which stage of your career you are, I would say. There are different career entrances um, at ESA. So if you're, if you're during your studies and you're finishing your master, you can start as a young graduate uh, trainee for AGTs. We also have, since this year, the Young Professional Program, so which is, of course, for people um, at the beginning of their career, so two to three years of experience. So you can start like this. Or if you're experienced professional, you can also start um, on, a, on a standard staff role. Okay, so let's see what's next. <clears throat> also from Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> okay, so the question's from a girl. So it says, I'm a girl and my dream is to become an astronaut. Is this possible? Not only is it possible, it is highly encouraged. Um, we're in the process of doing the astronaut campaign at the moment, the 2021-2022 astronaut campaign. And we actually encourage applications from women, uh, but it all starts with the education, doesn't it? I mean, girls have to go into the STEMs, um, the science, the technology, the engineering, and the maths. So this is the, really the starting point, because to become an astronaut, you have to have a master's degree in one of the you know, engineering or scientific domains that are relevant. So absolutely a girl can become an astronaut. In fact, we have a, a, a girl astronaut. We have Samantha Cristoforetti. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the question is, do you respond to all applications? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the short answer is yes, even if you're rejected or if you're successful throughout the application process, uh, uh, we do provide uh, feedback. It might take a little bit of time uh, from time to time, but uh, our intention is for sure to get back to everybody who applied. Okay, so... Is it the Instagram? It's Instagram again. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, get a lot of questions from Instagram. Okay, how long does an application usually take to process? So in some cases, that can take a little bit longer, let's say anywhere between one month to three months. Mm -hmm. um, but some recruitments happen extremely fast. So once you've been interviewed, um, sometimes we can let the candidate know within even a week or two weeks. Yeah. So it really depends. Okay. What does the next one say? Um, any jobs for space enthusiasts over the age of 40? Uh, I would say absolutely. Um, only the sky is the limit. <laughs> no, in overall we don't have a, we don't have a, a age limitation when it comes to job applications. So uh, everybody is welcome to apply. Yeah. Uh, there's a second one. There's a second question. Do you, do you want to answer it? Kind of goes along the way of mine. Fine. This question is. Do you really accept all ages? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we at the moment uh, offer contracts to the age 63. Yeah. Okay, and so if somebody is 62, yeah. it doesn't necessarily make sense to, to hire somebody who's 62 years old, mm. okay? because they'll only be in the agency for one year. So that's one of our constraints. On the younger end of the spectrum, 
Um, we have a lot of very young people in the agency because we have these fantastic programs like the internship program, we have the young graduate trainee program, yep. we have the, um, the, the research fellowship program, and most recently we have what's called the junior professional program, yep. um, which is attracting people with two or three years experience um, and with the intention to you know, develop within the agency and then uh, permanently work for ESA. Okay, so it's me again? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I okay. keep taking the double ones. <laughs> <laughs> you keep, keep taking the double questions. Okay, ah, this is a good one. So the question is, can I get into ESA without a background in space? I love this question because um, the short answer is absolutely yes. Um, it very much depends on the area, however. We've had people in the past from the automotive industry, for example. Um, I mean, you know, we're delving into areas like artificial intelligence, and that doesn't necessarily need to be from, from space. So we are more and more trying to look um, for diversity within our organization and looking at people who can bring in new and different and novel ideas coming from other industries, in fact. And of course, a lot of our positions are not necessarily technical or scientific. We have a lot of support positions available in, you know, in, um, in contracts, in the legal department, in communications. We also have positions available in human resources, facility management, these sorts of things, and IT. So in those domains, you absolutely don't need a space background. Um, and in fact, it's, um, we encourage people coming from all sorts of different industries. Okay, so Mattia, are you ready for the next question? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I'm always puzzled by the ESA pay scale, okay? It very much depends on the country in which you work, but in terms of the salary details, we have quite a lot of information on our careers website, actually. So www.esa.int, and then you would just click on the careers page. Mm -hmm. So we have the information there. Yeah, it's available. Yeah. Okay, uh, Fiona, this second question is related to salaries again. Okay. Um, the question is, are salaries negotiable? We're a government, we're, we're an international organization, so we have to be fair uh, with our salaries. So that's the first thing. I have had people in the past uh, come back to me and, and asked if there was something that we could do better mm -hmm. in terms of the salary. Um, and in some cases, we have improved the salary. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, we haven't, but we've talked through with the person. The thing we have to remember always about ESA is the salary is one component of the package, but there's a whole series of benefits. fairly attractive benefits in terms of health care, mm -hmm. in terms of um, all sorts of components, mm -hmm. um, which makes it a, quite an attractive organization to work for. What skill set and qualifications does a successful ESA applicant possess? It really depends on the job you're applying for, right? For, mm -hmm. for B grades, uh, uh, one has to have a bachelor degree. Uh, for A grades, uh, you need to have a, a master's degree. Mm -hmm. And if you're applying for a research fellow, you are expected to have a PhD because it's a, it's a postdoc uh, uh, training experience. Yeah. And then every, uh, every position will also have uh, expected technical competences listed in the application. I always advise to do a bit of a gap analysis when you apply uh, from between your CV and uh, what's required in the, in the uh, job description. We don't expect them, of course, to have 100% uh, of requirements, but the more you have, the better. Yeah, I would, uh, I would encourage everybody who thinks they can fulfill the job requirements to apply, even though they see maybe they don't fill 100% of the requirements. Okay, so my turn. <laughs> I like this question. What was your funniest interview experience? It's, it was during the time of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, we interviewed a series of candidates. So let, let's imagine we interviewed the woman mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock, okay? Yeah. At one o'clock, we interviewed a man. Mm -hmm. And we, it was exactly the same background. Uh. <laughs> so it was very clear <laughs> that the people, they lived in the same house. It's so um, we interviewed obviously the wife or the partner uh -huh. at 11 o'clock. And then at one o'clock, we interviewed 
the husband or or the the, the partner, male, yeah. the partner. Yeah, so they were basically competing for the same job. Yeah, you don't get that every day. No? You <laughs> certainly don't get that every day. Okay. Okay. Next question. Instagram is the absolute winner. Yeah. Is it hard to get a job at ESA? I think in average we probably could say that we get around uh, 70, 80 applications per position. Mm -hmm. uh, so from this point, uh, I would say it's very competitive uh, to get it. But, um, you know, uh, I, I don't think this would be something to discourage people from applying because I would say if you really want it, uh, if you're really motivated to contribute to European Space Agency, you should just try. It is competitive, but uh, it's certainly not impossible. Absolutely. Never know what to expect, Mattia, with these questions, eh? <laughs> so the, the first question is, what kind of benefits do ESA staff get? We have a whole series of benefits, some of which I can name. We have a very, um, let's say, comprehensive social security system, so health care. Um, what's interesting about that aspect is that um, because ESA is an international organization, we don't adhere to the national legis legislations of the countries that we're located. We have our own internal ESA healthcare system. Mm -hmm. We have things that are called expatriation allowance to allow mm -hmm. people coming from other countries to settle into the country. So in general, I would say the benefits of ESA are very, very attractive. Um, what is also nice about ESA is that it's a very strong social network and we have very, we have a lot of social clubs. Yep. Um, and you name the sport, you name the hobby, we probably have a club for it. Yep. So everything from wine tasting to tennis to golf. Do it yourself club. Do it yourself club. Um, we have a whole series of fitness classes which we offer um, all our staff and contractors. Um, so in terms of benefits, yeah. ESA is quite an attractive employer, I would say. Okay, so Mattia, um, the next question is for you, mm -hmm. okay. and I'm very curious how you're going to answer this, okay? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, so anything like free massages. Free massages? <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that question. Yeah. Um, I would say we don't have uh, free massages per se. But uh, what we do have actually, um, uh, at least here uh, in Aztec, in the Netherlands, um, is it is possible to get uh, like a massage therapist uh, uh, which can do the massages on site. They're not for free, however, uh, but it's possible to get a massage at work, which I guess is not the case everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Why is a master's degree required? All right. Now, I have to say, we're quite strict when it comes to our educational requirements for our, um, for our what we call A-grade positions, mm -hmm. our professional positions. Yeah. However, a master's is not required for support positions, so that's an important clarification. Yeah. Now, we want the absolute best talent that we can find mm -hmm. in Europe. Um, and some of the universities are producing some absolutely outstanding master students, and that's more or less why we target that that uh, that segment of the academic population. Yeah. And some of the topics that we tackle here in the agency, they are quite uh, complex from the from the scientific uh, point, right? So probably the one of the reasons is that people who have done the master have gone deeper into the subject absolutely and uh, that's what makes them uh, more qualified for the for the challenges they will come across uh, while working in the agency absolutely okay another instagram uh, follower uh, how do you filter candidates so i would say that uh, that the qualifications are are one filter and then uh, then of course the experience uh, so Usually every job posting will uh, mention the amount of experience one needs to have. And then basically um, it's, um, it's a gap analysis between your experience, your, uh, your achievements and what is required for the post. And um, the, every application will be checked by the, by the HR to make sure that you fulfill the basic requirements. Um, and then it will be checked by, uh, by the hiring manager. Um, and then again by uh, HR uh, before the candidates are invited. So okay. this is this is the process, and then 
yeah, interviews and uh, selection of the best candidate. Okay, so in the ESA hat we have one more question left. Yep. <laughs> so, and the question is, the winner is, <laughs> oh, okay, this is interesting. Do unsuccessful applicants go into a career black hole? In fact, we have a question on our application where we ask candidates that if they happen to be unsuccessful for the position that they're applying for, mm -hmm. would they be open to their, their application being considered for other positions exactly. in the agency? Okay? Yep. And I have approached several candidates who I've either interviewed for another position mm -hmm. or who's been recommended to me by a colleague who they thought would be excellent for the position that I was looking for. And um, so you absolutely do not go into a career black hole, not at all. And of course, we allow applications from candidates if they want to apply for several positions. Yeah. So that's the other option. So no, no career black holes at ESA. <laughs> okay.